So today we will be dealing with the image-based questions which have been recently asked either in the NEET PT examinations or the FMG examinations. Our preparation for the 2025 examinations needs to be more specific and more in line with the latest pattern. So let's, without wasting time, we just go through the questions to get a bit of an idea how the questions are asked, what are the types of questions which are asked, and so we start over here. Now, as you can see, this is a maze based question. A figure is based, this is a question from pathology which has been asked, and you can just read that this is a 55 year old male with LBE, low back leak, and high calcium levels. Which disease manifests with the finding as shown below? So as you can see over here, it is alpha, beta, and gamma. And what you can see is a gamma spike, an M spike of the protein. Uh, now, the options given are lymphoma, myeloma, nephrotic syndrome, and liver failure. Uh, though the question has not been given in full length, but a good student will invariably make out the clinical condition which has been asked over here. So as a, you are aware of the fact that multiple myeloma, it is a disease usually of the elderly where a patient can present either with a back pain or any osteoclastic lesion, osteolytic lesion in the skull or in the vertebra. And the vertebra are most frequently involved and a patient invariably presents with a back ache or a low back ache or lumbar. So, a patient, classically an elderly patient with backache who has got what you can see over here, hypercalcemia, high calcium levels. That is again a feature of multiple myeloma, classically associated with anemia. So, a combination of an elderly patient with a chronic backache, with hypercalcemia and many more features which preferably are not given here and should have been given but this is for a good study to pick up and the M spike so as you are aware of the fact paraproteinemia, M spike, monoclonal gammopathy and the classical features of osteolytic this over here is an M spike and uh, you can have instead of this you can have a skull radiograph where you can have an osteolytic lesion in the skill skull or multiple osteolytic lesions in the skull or you can have a pathological film of Rolux formation where in the RBCs aggregate together or you can have an osteolytic lesion or osteolytic lesions in the vertebra. So the connection over here, the answer to this question would be the answer B, myeloma. Well, how to rule out the other things, lymphoma, you know, Hodgkin's, non Hodgkin's, they will characteristically present with lymph endopathy, either in the cervical or the extra cervical regions, especially the nodes in the neck, and a host of other features which are entirely having a different spectrum. As far as the nephrotic syndrome is concerned, the nephrotic syndrome would not present with M spike, the nephrotic syndrome has got features like edema and asaka and there would be a bit of history of a renal pathology as well. As far as the liver failure is concerned, I don't think that this suits uh, anything like a liver failure, the increase in the liver enzymes, the past history of any problem with the liver hepatitis of some sort, chronic hepatitis. So the thing is that this is a level A question, a very easy question, so that's why it has been placed over here to give an idea. So this is the, how you come to a conclusion and answer the question. Now we move on to the next question. Now in here you have a figure where the question is labeled like this. The patient is in the figure is toxic. So toxic is important, shows extensive skin degradation. This, there is extensive involvement of mucosy as well, which has not been shown. Most likely the patient is having tense. So here the diagnosis is also given and the question asks about the organism implicated. So you are aware 
The thing is that you have to know the full course and the clinical spectrum, the pathology, the microbiology, the clinical presentation of diseases. It is not uh, that you know one aspect of the thing and you do not know uh, much about. That is what we uh, are focusing on. How to come to a diagnosis, how to arrive at a conclusion, how to answer the question appropriately. So as far as toxic epidermal necrosis is concerned, human toxic epidermal necrosis is in some cases a severe form of SGS, Stephen Johnson syndrome, and there is extensive derivation, exfoliation of the skin and there are huge patches of skin which lie denuded and it can progress severely, instantaneously and quickly to septicemia and cause death in a very short span of time if not recognized early. So this is important and multiple factors, positive agents which are there, there can be drugs, there can be uh, multiple pathology as far as viral infections are concerned, bacterial infections are concerned. But over here we have to remember that the question specifically asks for among the following, the organisms involved and we have we give choice. Glossarium, bacteroids, staph and pseudomonas. And we are well aware that staph and streptococci, they are two important organisms which are most commonly and most frequently associated with toxic epidermal necrosis. So this is a very important point. Stem is an organism which, is, uh, which should be studied, should not be left. Stem is implicated in many conditions such as acute bacterial endocarditis. I'm not talking about some acute bacterial endocarditis. Stem is associated with acute mastitis. Stem is associated with acute osteomyelitis. And this is one clinical condition toxic epidermal necrosis in which other organisms like pseudomonas, bacterioids and clostridium do not play a significant role. So we have to remember the association of toxic epidermal necrosis with staph and in some cases streptococci. Over here the staph is the perfect answer. Now this is a third slide from radiology, a combination of oncology, radiology and endocrinology. So you can see the question reads, a young female patient presents with chronic headache, vomiting, visual disturbance, seizures, hypobetrophism, polyuria, galactoria, and anemia. CT MRI was done, which is shown over here. And among the patients, this is the pituitary tumor, cellular tumor, postecranial force tumor, midline tumor. This is the area which is labeled, the white area over here. Now, uh, this is again a question which has been put, very easy question and here it is a combination to test your knowledge, to test your skill of interpreting normal, uh, I would say, to differentiate between normal and abnormal, number one. Number second, to localize the lesion, the site of the lesion. As you can see, just without going to the question, you can see over here, this is the area of the pituitary fossa. And pituitary fossa, you are well aware of Sarah you are well aware of the uh, uh, pituitary gland, and in the pituitary gland, uh, we have got the anterior pituitary, the posterior pituitary, and this is the site of the pituitary fossa. While we have the pituitary gland, which is shown over here, so abnormal growth of the pituitary, most likely a pituitary adenoma, then depending upon the size, a microadenoma or a macroadenoma. But now, we, we have not uh, uh, emphasized uh, the question part of it. So now read the question again. That will give us support to your um, diagnosis or if you have got a good uh, localization knowledge. So, panic, vomiting. Visual disturbance, she has not specified the visual disturbance, which most likely would be bitemporal hemianopia, which is the most likely visual feature which we see in pituitary tumors. Then, seizures, they are common. Hypopituitism, polyuria, capturia, anemia. A very important thing in females is the presence of uh, milk secretion through the breast, excessive milk secretion through the breast, that is galactoria and we have got the amnuria, classic feature of the pituitary tumors. Now, 
uh, over here, the option is simply between the same bell and post and midline tumor of the nervous. So same bell will be the post cranial fossa. So post cranial fossa is over here. This is the same bell. This is not in the region of the same bell. Again, midline of the nervous. Nervous is also in the same bell, and you do not have the uh, localization as here. Then uh, it is neither the same bell. It is neither the posterior cranial fossa nor is in the vermis of the cerebellum. So it is over here, it is simply the pituitary gland which is over there and the scan shows the pituitary tumor. So the answer is the pituitary tumor, a LLA question, very easy question for you to get. Just to get an acquainted with what types of questions are asked and how to answer. Now this is again a slide. Uh, the question reads as a young male present with multiple developed group to design to lesions present in the neck associated with pain. The most likely diagnosis is psoriasis, pancreas, herpes, or dermatitis, herpetiformis. Now, as far as this question is concerned, simply you can see that these are bunch small green like vesicles over here. We are well aware of the herpes zoster virus or the varicella zoster virus or what we commonly call as shingles. It presents with a pain, a neuropathic pain along the distribution of the dermatomes. This varicella zoster virus, vis a -vis, or the herpes zoster virus, it remains dormant in the dorsal ganglia and just at any time of immunosuppression, immunocompression, what happens? It reactivates itself and presence in the form of a vesicular dermatoma rash associated with tingling sensation, paresthesias, and a classical, usually unilateral. It is not usually present bilaterally. It is most often present unilaterally. So unilateral distribution of lesions, grouped vesicular lesions in the initial, and then sometimes you can have a very severe pain associated with it in the form of post hepatic neuralgia, not responding to conventional uh, anti-inflammatory and painkillers, taking away a different type of drugs. And so you have got this vesicular rash. And simply if you are accustomed, it can have in the thoracic region, it can have in the abdominal region, a classic distribution along the dermatomes. And there is no doubt that it does not present itself in the form of plaques, which might be seen in psoriasis. It does not present in the form of mucosal lesions and blisters, which can be classic or pancreas. It does not produce a severe fluidity region like dermatitis or reformis. So the simple question is that the examiner asks you about the lesion and the lesion is herpes zoster. So it's as simple as that. Now over here, this is the question. A 65-year-old male has features as shown in figure the likely site of lesion is. Now you can well read this can can you zoom this figure please? Can you just zoom this figure please? Zoom this figure over here. So you have mask-like expressionless pains, often with drooling, drooling of saliva, a bent posture, pill rolling tremor of hands, and stick shut in gait. Now, it does not ask you about the diagnosis as such. It asks you about the pathology, where the pathology lies, and uh, uh, areas given are coordinate nucleus, substantial generation of Orlando, substantial nigra, and amyloid body. Now, as far as this figure is concerned, you know that there is this disease which is given the name as Parkinsonism. And Parkinsonism, Parkinsonism presents classically as a neurodegenerative disease. And the neurodegeneration causes features like a resting trauma or a pill rolling trauma, four to six hertz frequency, and it is classically resting trauma. Then we have mask like patients. We have short shutting gates, bread kinesia, or complete in severe cases, complete absence of motion, a kinesia in addition to certain other behavioral changes. So Parkinsonism or paralysis, agitors usually present in elderly patients 
and you have a classical picture which is like this, the short shuffling gates. In, in addition to expressionless faces, you cannot make emotions out of your face. In addition to rigidity, these are classical features of Parkinsonism. But here, the examiner tests your ability to know the site of lesion, and it is neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, medicine which has been asked. The pathology lies where. So you know caudate nucleus? No, absolutely not. Caudate nucleus is concerned with planning of movements. So there can be other features, but not these features which we see in here. So quadrate nucleus will not be associated with these features. Substantial gelatin of sufferlando is a nucleus in the spinal cord. Nothing to do with a clinical presentation like this. Then amyloid body. No, never. Amyloid body is something which is concerned with uh, uh, physiology other than this thing. And amyloid body can present with something which can which we call a scular blocky syndrome in which we can have hypersexuality, hyperpolarity, and other features. But we have to remember that substantia nigra, substantia, a substance nigra, blackish, uh, or dark substance, and very well developed nucleus in the midbrain. And in here we have the decreased levels of dopamine, and the pathology of Parkinsonism lies with the decreased levels of dopamine within substantia nigra. So the region is in the substantia nigra, a well developed nucleus in the midbrain, and you have to remember the pathology. This is how we arrive at the diagnosis or the conclusion, and this is the types of questions which have been asked. I think that this clarifies a bit of a concept, and you will read in a manner which suits your examinations the best. I wish you best of luck in your examinations.